we're going to exile the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. And because the Flesh Gorger is in the graveyard, it's going to come out as the full 7-5. Look at that. Boom. Down to two. And next turn, we have Lethal. And clank them um, up. And we just see the power of Kaya. Ladies and gentle mages, civilians across the multiverse. Welcome back to another episode with Mana Man and today. We've got a juicer for you. Before we dig into the deck, make sure to leave a like. The button looks just like this, and it does help out the channel tremendously. I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's go ahead and dig right into this. Let's go. So we're going to build around Kaya Spirits Justice. I did have a on release day. I did play a, a, a spirit deck with Kaya, but I think I may... Uh, this is actually significantly different. This is more of like an Orzhov mid-range deck. So instead of going in for the the the, uh, the Cityscape Landscaper leveler, Landscaper leveler, the same thing, but this, is, this time, we're going to be going in for the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger in a more mid-range shell so why do we have the Phyrex and Flesh Gorger obviously with Kaya how this works when you when you exile a card from a graveyard you can make a token not it can be any sort of token it can be a treasure token map token whatever kind of token you have you can make it a creature until end of turn so if you go for the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger obviously if it's in our hand it's just a wonderful card 3-3 with lifelink menace we know what Phyrexian Flesh Gorger does but when you use Kaya with it the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger becomes a 7-5 that is right. So you get to pretty much just cheat in this Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, and it's never that dead because we are in, um, like a mid-ranging type of deck. So you can just play this for three, or you can reanimate it as a 7-5 Lifelinker. Absolutely amazing. Now, obviously, you can also go for Aklazots. Why do we have Aklazots? Well, it's just an amazing card, and Aklazots actually does create you tokens with the bats. The 1-1 one, one bats, if they do discard a land card, you do get that. And also, you get attack trigger. So with, with the way Kyle works is you don't get that enter the battlefield type of abilities, but you do get attack triggers because the tokens become the creature. It's not like you, it doesn't enter the battlefield, but as long as it has an attack trigger, you can use Aklazots as well. So Aklazots and the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger are definitely our two big threats with Kaya. But let's get into the 10th district hero. This also has collect evidence too. So this way, we can when you collect evidence... You can also use this to kind of get rid of your creatures here because that works with Kaya too. You don't have to use the plus two to surveil and then exile a card for, from a graveyard. You can just have Kaya out and then you can use 10th District Hero to collect evidence and then again go for Aklazots or the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. And then 10th District, it's just good anyway. It's got a 2-3. It's got three toughness. Now, what I like about the 10th District Hero, you will actually, I'm redoing this intro, so you'll actually see the gameplay with the Malicious Eclipse. Overall, I have decided to switch it out for Path of Peril. Initially, I did think that this was pretty good, and it is pretty good. If you're playing best of three, definitely run this, in the, at least in your sideboard. But I think overall, having the Path of Peril and having that ability to clear the entire board rather than just two or less is a little bit better. But initially, I had the District Hero because of the three toughness and then the Malicious Eclipse Exiles. It is good. But overall, I mean, you could probably even run both of them side by side, but that's neither here nor there. That's kind of the reason why you'll see in the in the video I have Eclipse, but I'm running Path of Peril right now, just because I think it is a little bit better. Either way, I think I'm just blabbing out at this point. So, uh, right of Oblivion and the Hopeless Nightmare, obviously the Greedy Freebooter, really, really nice. Now, the weird card is the Devouring Sugar Maul. This card is absolutely amazing. At the beginning of your upkeep, you're going to have to sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token. Obviously, we have a lot of tokens, and the Devouring Sugar Maul creates you two tokens. It gives you the, the Human Creature token and a Food token. So, with Kaya, obviously, you're just going to have a lot of tokens hanging around. And Kaya, again, does not have to be a creature token. Any token, you're good to go. And then you can even drop the Sugar Maw if you really need to. And then you can just start, uh, you know, sacrificing whatever you need. You got the Wandering Emperor here, etc., etc. This is the deck. I think I've rambled on long enough. We're going to have some Kaya Orzob mid-range fun. Consider joining the channel. That helped me out as a content creator. Get ready to subscribe if you had not already. And without further ado, let's get ready to vanquish some enemies. Puma, how are we doing here? Looking pretty good hands. I mean, this is about, almost not the most it gets. We do have a little Backstreet Boy action. Let's see what we can surveil. Malicious Eclipse. Man, I really like this card. Obviously, without knowing what we're playing against, I think I'm just going to keep it. So I'm seeking Rakdos, which uh, may, come into, may come in handy. But just dropping down this 10th District Hero. Of course, a very synergetic with the Kaya. Just see if we can uh, maybe get something going here. Don't really have any of the evidence collecting, but you don't always need it. I love the 10th district league or the I keep wanting to say the legionnaire the 10th district hero 10th district legionnaire was a boros card but speaking of boros the malicious eclipse can take care of the boros convoke deck very well and then we survive with three toughness so there was the kaya all right we're looking pretty gosh darn good here i think um we're just gonna drop the flesh gorger eventually after we swing in here but um yeah don't really know what else is going on and is this hold on hold on that, that's actually this isn't even grixis this is four colors 
Azorius and Arakdos land there, so I'm not okay. Let's see what we're playing here. Um, oh, that's not good. Let's go ahead and give them a crying face. That was not good. But at least now we got some evidence for the 10th District Hero. I would like to have gotten into a land so that we could go in for Kaya, but that's okay. Let's go in for the Hopeless Nightmare and we'll re replenish as best we can. Yeah, definitely kind of brutal there. We're seeing the uh, the land there, the, the weird land base. Definitely wasn't expecting a Brotherhood's End, so that is quite the, uh, the bummer. Restless Fortress, okay. Yeah, I think we're okay here. I mean, we're just kind of heading steady. I want to get into the Kaya really badly. Jace. Okay, let's see what we're going to do with Jace. <laughs> Alright, they're going to do... I'm um, 10th District and Hero. Not a big deal. We do get into the Restless Fortress, so we can do that. I mean, obviously having the Rite of Oblivion, a very, very nice card, especially with the Hopeless Nightmare. So, let's go and get rid of the Jace. They pump it up to 6, even though uh, it's not going to uh, matter. So, the, the Abandoned Mire is, actually does work really well with the Kaya. So, I don't know. It feels weird putting it back. But Soul Search, of course, really, really good. I think we're going to lean towards giving it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, our Ben of Meyer works two ways. We can use that with Kaya to, like, um, you know, give her food. But we don't really have a token unless we make something. With... Yeah, I think, I think we're better off to keep it. And the Soul Search can kind of just take care of them. I still don't know exactly what we're playing against. So the Soul Search kind of helps out that in that regard, too. I could just slam down Kaya. But I think going for the Soul Search is better. Let's just see what they have before I just slam down Kaya and get countered, because they're running blue in this weird, weird deck, so... Let's see what you're, what you're packing here. Um, Path of Peril and the Capricious Hellraiser, okay. Uh, let's just go for the Hellraiser, the Path of Peril just is what it is if they kill it. I, I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up, we don't really have anything else to do anyway, so just uh, exile a Soul Search, not really that big of a deal. Let's just do this, and there's really nothing else we could do this turn anyway, even if they do Path of Peril it. Doesn't really matter, let's just at least get a little bit more damage off the board here. Bang, down to 12 you go, and I think we're, we're held and steady. The only thing they really have here, I'm assuming they're going to use the Sockinson. Might as well, yep. Yeah, Sockinson right in there. So, okay. I mean, now their Path of Peril is a little bit weird, so I don't know why. I mean, I think we're holding steady. Okay. Bitter Reunion. Let's just see how bitter they're going to be. And a Scrapwork Mutt. Okay. So, this thing has Unearth. And they have, oh, they actually have it on Earth in the graveyard. So here's where the Malicious Eclipse does come in handy. Obviously, that exile is really, really nice. We get our Mire that we kind of set up for. So now I'm trying to think, do I want to go for Kaya? I think we are. Let's go for the um, Malicious Eclipse, not the Kaya, excuse me. Let's go for Malicious Eclipse. And then this little mutt will go back to the scrapyard. Back to the pound with you, you little mutt. And then no unearth. They still unearth the other one, but um, I kind of like this malicious eclipse. Of course, the malicious eclipse does not exile our own creatures, even if they were to kill it with the um, like the greedy freebooter. So, I think let's go ahead and swing in here. Yeah, I do. Um, I'm hold the silk. Got vigilance. Whatever. Down to ten. Don't want. I don't want to drop the mire. Obviously, we're gonna hold the mire to kind of synergize with Kaya. If they want to go for path of peril. That is fine. It's okay, and actually not too bad of a move. They go for uh, Path of Peril, and then they go for the Scrapwork Mutt. That is, it's an okay move. And why did they why did they hard cast that for everything? I'm really confused. Let's go and drop Kaya, but I'm really confused. They, they could have done that with just two, right? Our hero was only a two drop, so they could have just. I, I'm not complaining. Hello, Kaya. How you doing here? Surveil so two, and then exile a card from McGregor. I kind of want to do this. We could just set, start setting up from a one one. But they don't really have a board here, and let's go ahead and get rid of the scrap work mutt too. So I kind of like this. Typically, when Kaya comes out on a fresh board, I'm gonna plus one just to get the token out. But I don't know. I think we're I think we're fine doing that. Set up our draws, get rid of that mutt. Unlicensed hearse. Okay, that's this is actually kind of a problem because this thing can just exile stuff at will. So now our Kaya interaction's a little shaky, just because if I go to surveil and then do that thing with Kaya, now the unlicensed hearse kind of. Um, Dang, that actually puts quite of the damper on our day here. And they're just going to do it right away. Yeah, they, they know. So they get, that is really, really... Let's go ahead and give them a little angry donut thingy. I don't even know what exactly what this thing is, but... um, All right. <laughs> Puma. All right. Um, I think we're just going to create a 1-1, one, one, sure. And then just drop the 10th District Hero, and then go for the Greedy Freebooter. So not yeah, I think it's fine. They only have one card in their hand. They got this unlicensed hearse, which I don't really love. And it is a little awkward holding on to this abandoned mire, but I think it's okay. I still would like to kind of use this. Plus, they might swing in with the hearse, so 
yeah, we got the 10th District Heroes. They got rid of our uh, Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, which really sucks. As you know, the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, obviously, um, if you use it with Kaya to make it a, a token into the Flesh Gorger, it comes in as the 7-5. So that is wonderful, but... Well, unlicensed first, licensed to annoy, I guess. Okay. Let's see what you got. Only two more cards. Oh, make that one card in their hand. I thought maybe they would uh, keep that card for cycling. But, uh, oh, okay. So, Capricious Hell Hellraiser. We got rid of your buddy. But here we go. And they're going to cast... Well, they're going to they're three random. And then they get one. Okay. Well, let's see what they got. Path of Peril. Okay, that's fine. The Greedy Freebooter does create a token here. And this is actually not that bad. So, Soul Search. That doesn't do any good. No, they, they already don't have a hand. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. This is not that bad. We do create a treasure token this way. And this kind of helps out with the Restless Fortress. I'm already plotting what we're going to do. Because they're not... Even if they go for the Unlicensed Hearse, they can crew this, right? That's fine. And they're going to swing in for Kaya. This is actually... I, I think this is kind of a mistake on their end. I mean, I, they don't really know, obviously, that we have the Abandoned Mire that we're going to do some self-milling here. But this is this is really, really sneaky. What I'm going to do is just go in straight up for the Abandoned Mire. And if we get into something pretty crazy... We have a token, and this token does not have to be a creature. So, there it is, the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. I do not want to take the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. I want to keep it right in that graveyard there. That is absolutely beautiful. Wow, okay. So, let's go ahead and grab, um, I guess the hero. It doesn't really matter. We're going to use this token, and let's go. Surveil 2, exile a card from a graveyard, and I think these... Oh, actually, we'll just keep the Hopeless Nightmare, because that's actually lethal. So, we've got the Hopeless Nightmare or the Restless Fortress. And now, we're going to exile the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. And because the Flesh Gorger is in the graveyard, it's going to come out as a full 7-5. Look at that. Boom. Down to 2. And next turn, we have Lethal with Kaya. Now, that is absolutely amazing. With the Hopeless Nightmare, looking absolutely amazing. All right. Yeah, up to 27 life. We don't even need Kaya. They only have 2. I don't think they have life gain. So, I, I, they are running white. So, I don't know. They, they might have something crazy. This whole deck that they've had has been pretty crazy. So overall, yeah, I don't really know. I mean, they kind of restless. Vet. Yeah, they don't, they don't have any form of life gain. I have the restless fortress that can just hit them for two as soon as we swing, and then I have the hopeless nightmare. Yeah, right here. So like, yeah, we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good to go. We don't need uh, Kaya anymore. Kaya, you have done your due diligence. Salutations. I'll be back. And uh, yeah, let's, let's just go ahead and start off and just drop the uh, the hopeless nightmare. And I think we're, we're looking good. So yeah, let's drop this hopeless nightmare. And do you have any life gain or anything? Puma, Timon and Puma, they give us a good game. Appears not. Let's go ahead, clank them um, up, and we just see the power of Kaya. Chili con car. How we doing here? <laughs> okay, a little bit slower for hand, but that's okay. We got the Backstreet Boys, the Surveil Land. So let's go ahead and see. Ooh, Oh, we'll keep that. We don't have anything really to play before turn three uh, outside that. So I would have taken a land or something cheap. That's fine. All right, let's get down to our Restless Fortress. Yeah, we get down to the Restless Fortress, go for the Greedy Freebooter, and we're making good. So they're holding up priority. Go ahead. Do you want to use a uh, Cut Down? That's the only thing they can really be holding up priority for with one black source on the Greedy Freebooter. So you're more than welcome to uh, cut down my like, Freebooter. That's what you want to do. So we're going to uh, Demir, possibly Esper. So let's go ahead and just drop down the Sanctum. Now, the, the worst thing that they want us, they would not want to see is the Liliana. So maybe we do go a little bit more conservative and go for the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. Because I'm assuming they probably have a counter spell here. I mean, it's, you know, so let's do this. I think Liliana is a lot more crippling to control. It's a lot more crippling to deal with, too. So yeah, so make this, well, there's the make disappear. It is what it is. So now we can buy set up for the Liliana on the next turn. And I think Liliana is going to be a lot more... Yeah, maybe not a lot more, because they do have that new card. They do, what's it called? The, um, it's the new Karloff card that costs three, that you can get rid of Planeswalkers that cost three as well. So the Celestis, okay, I, is Celestis actually making a comeback? The Celestis, I haven't seen a lot of Celestis lately, but, um, but a good card. I've just, um, seen a lot more of it lately. All right, so let's go for Liliana. Here's our plan the whole time. Liliana, hello. Let's just start a card. I'm going to get rid of this Malicious Eclipse. doesn't really do a single thing in this matchup. I don't think they're really running weenies or creatures whatsoever. And I think we'll be okay. So they actually... Wow. So they actually are going to cut down the Greedy Freebooter, which actually comes to quite a bit of surprise to me. I'm going to get rid of the Soul Search. I love Soul Searching versus Control. But unfortunately, we're just looking for... We're Soul Searching for some land. So... Okay. Breach the Multiverse. Liliana, still kind of, um, you know, Celestis and Lily. Got some absolute classics here. 
Alright, so we do have the token, which can come in handy versus uh, Kaya. Okay, Celeste is going to do its thing. This seems to be true blue, true blue Demir instead of Esper or anything like that. So let's see what we can got. All right, another Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. Definitely would prefer something else. Definitely would prefer... Man, I don't really want to bust this treasure token open. So I think we're just going to be a little coy with it. Let's go for the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. Build up Liliana. Take our time. Now, I'm I do want to get into Aklazots as well. So I, I'm going to I'm gonna keep Aklazots. If they're not running... If I was playing against White, I'd probably get rid of Aklazots. Because White has a lot more Exile. I think Demir has a little... I mean, they do. What, what Exiles with Black? They have, like, the end, maybe. Um, I don't know, but it's a lot more destruction ability, so I think we're going to keep Aklazots. I think that could be a lot more persisting of a threat here. Um, Gix's Command's not the end of the world. Kind of, well, actually, actually just was like, as a one-for-one. One. They didn't really have anything to bring back with it, so... Not too bad there. It was actually not too bad. So now I think we're going to go for Kaya. Let's just do it. It sucks to use our treasure token because that makes the Aklazots a little bit weird. But we're going to go ahead and get rid of the Soul Search anyway. So get rid of the Soul Search. They only have one more card in their hand. And there's another Gixxas Command. And at this point, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just set up the tokens. I could just go for the Surveil for the Aklazots because this Aklazots is sitting very, very awkwardly here. But I might even have to go for Liliana's minus six instead of discarding the Aklazots depending on what they play here. So Jace... Okay. Your cool voice lines will not fool me, Jace. So they're going to use minus two draw. Uh, if they do get into something kind of kooky here, I'll be kind of sad. Restless Fortress, but now i got to make a decision. Do we want to discard the Aklazots with Liliana? Or do we want to go for the minus six or do we want to hold still? So it's kinda, I do want the Aklazots, so this is a little bit awkward. But if we do discard the Aklazots, I guess, I guess it actually works out pretty well. Even if they do use this to draw or do something. Ooh, Siphon Insight is actually quite annoying. That's actually quite annoying. Because I was going to say, we can discard Aklazots, and then we can transform with Kaya if we exile it. And then we can draw a card, because we're going to make this uh, token Aklazots with Kaya. Me. Yeah, let's do this. We're going to get rid of the Jace. But yeah, that is a little bit annoying now. Hey, but um, Aganjo doesn't really do anything, and right up Oblivion, we can get value from that in the graveyard. So I think we're just better off getting rid of that. And go to the graveyard and get rid of this Aklazots, because whenever it attacks... The thing with the Kaya is obviously transforming these tokens into these creatures. The you need attack person. triggers. You're not going to be able to get into the battlefield stuff here. So that is why we do that. Get rid of the Jace. Get a little bit of lifelink. Even the lifelink's not going to matter in this matchup. And then the Hopeless the Nightmare actually pretty good with the right Oblivion. And then, you know, I don't... That, that Siphon Insight definitely was a little awkward, though. Ooh, Shelly. Okay. Um, well, we can't get rid of Liliana. We're going to have to do Kaya. <laughs> Liliana's ready to go. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So we got a little bit, I got a bit a little cute with the Liliana. Definitely got a little cute with the Liliana here with the with the six, not going it for it immediately, which is a little bit risky there, but it ends up playing off. I kind of like the Aklazot's move, but either way, let's go for Liliana's ultimate minus six. And Ooh. let's be, um, I think we're just going to separate the Shelly from the Celestis and then just kind of divide the lands in half and then make them lean towards keeping Shelly. And then we can write of Oblivion the Shelly. So, 1-1, one, 2-2, one, no, let's go, yeah, let's do that. Let's do two lands in Shelly, or three lands in the Celestis. I think I kind of like that more. I actually don't even know which one they're really going to take. It can't be a, it can't be a good decision. And we actually keep Liliana this way. Absolutely brutal. The kind of the gamble does pay off. All right, so they get rid of this shit. That's fine. And I think now, obviously, the plan the whole time was to go for the Rite of Oblivion. Let's go and swing in first mind as well. And now we're going to go for the Rite of Oblivion and get rid of the Celestis. And that is pretty brutal here. Now we get the Hopeless Nightmare. Of course, get the Scry. Fix up our next few draws here and get rid of the Celestis. And I think that's going to be hard to come back from. I'm not really sure how they're supposed to do this. So let's go get rid of the um, Shared Sanctum. And we'll get the Flesh Gorger going. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Next turn, we drop the Freebooter and the Flesh Gorger. They get rid of the Celestis. Unless they... They're holding up priority here for something. I don't... Oh, no? Okay. Maybe they're just holding full control. I do that sometimes. I'll hold up full control for, like, absolutely no reason. Like this. And no. Yeah. We're good. So, I think, um... I think we're good to go. They got three lands. They do have the Siphon in sight. Obviously, they can use the Siphon in Yeah, they're, they're going to have to just, I don't know, swing for the fences. It does get rid of our Flesh Gorger, but it's okay. I think we can survive that. It does eat up their whole entire turn. 
Okie dokie. Yeah, this is completely fine. We got a 10th district hero, and I think at this point we're starting to look pretty gosh darn good. Let's drop our greedy freebooter. Go for Liliana. Liliana has just been an all-star this game. Um, I'm definitely like the the have things we Oh the Mindbreaker is actually not a big deal. The Mindbreaker needs four blue to cast, and they have one. They have one. So I'm not even worried about that whatsoever. They get our own flesh gorger. Um Do we finally say goodbye to Liliana? I mean, I could keep using yeah, I think we're definitely going for the 10th district hero. We've got plenty of evidence, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, doesn't, I don't think it like, really matters here. I usually just go for the soul search. That makes sense. We're not going to reanimate the soul search from the graveyard or anything like that. So, um, Yeah, I think I think so. It's got lifelink. I think we kind of want to be a little snappy about it. It does kind of suck to lose the Liliana. But let's drop the Hopeless Nightmare to kind of empty their hand. So we get rid of that, whatever's in there. Ooh, that feels absolutely amazing. And now we're gonna sacrifice the Flesh Gorger. Sorry, we finally, finally get rid of Liliana. Not go. that I love it, but it is what it is. And now we got a pretty formidable board. 10th District Hero can, um, we're gonna go for the 10th District Hero and collect even more evidence next turn. And let's see if this is lethal here, hold on. If I collect the evidence here, that is, it's a five, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's actually not lethal. So I actually don't have lethal right now. You know, mm, I yeah, I, I don't think we're going to pump the, the hero just because it's not lethal. So we might as well just go a little bit wider. I don't think they really have a board wipe. Even if they do, the board wipe, the black board wipe, the new one from Karloff costs five. And they only have three. So I don't think they can really sweep the board here. And even if they do, we got Restless Fortress to kind of clean it up later. So yeah, they give it a good game, but grindy game, but we take it. Eddie B, how are we doing here? All right, looking pretty gosh darn good. Let's go and organize it. Uh, the Malicious Eclipse, absolutely love this card, but we're starting off a little bit slow. That's okay. Not really that worried. We're a mid-range deck. We're not an aggro deck. We're, we'll be okay. Uh, but there's an epic hero. This kind of screams Convoke, and this is exactly why I love the Malicious Eclipse so much. Wow, Gleeful Demolition. Okay, we are on the draw. This is okay. This is, we can actually swing. How, how often times can you swing the game like this? Let's go ahead and drop the 10th District Hero. Because we got three toughness on the hero, and the eclipse does minus two. Excuse me, minus two, minus two. A little gassy day. Oh, this is beautiful. The sanguine evangelist, absolutely amazing. The evangelist, um, not even gonna get that trigger. Let's do this. This, is, this feels amazing. Malicious eclipse, and now that evangelist does not even get to make the bat token. They just give it up. Good game. Jorgagool, how are we doing here? Looking okay. It's not the best hand. We are on the draw, so hopefully we're getting something. Goblin Tomb Raider. I haven't seen a Goblin Tomb Raider in a hot second. I could go in for the Greedy Freebooter turn one, but I think it's really important to sort get your just get this, just bite the bullet, turn one, get the surveil going, and do that. So Cemetery Gatekeeper. Dang, okay, so we got the goblin and the gatekeeper. A little strange here, but I don't love this. The, I mean I could go for a soul search. Or I can just go double Freebooter and take these double Cemetery Gatekeeper hits. I think I'm going to do it. I mean, it feels absolutely atrocious, but like, going for the Soul Search, I mean, they just kind of crack our face open. So, I, I don't know. I mean, all right. Should I double block? Should I double chump block? Or maybe, maybe, maybe we just hedge our bets. I could double block the Raider, but then if they had like, you know, a Shock or something, we kind of cry. Maybe we just kind of do this, take one, get rid of the Kaya, we already have one. We do make a treasure token, I mean, this is, this is a little, little topsy-turvy here. Let's see what they drop here now. Another Cemetery Gatekeeper. Okay, so I am really, really not liking the, uh, the lands here. Alright. Oh god. So if I drop 10th District Hero, the 3 Toughness, of course, is very, very nice, but we're going to take a whopping 4 damage for this. I, I think we're just still gonna have to go down to 10. I mean, I can't just like not play my canned. I mean, and then we go for the soul search or we can just go for another 10th district hero. Or we can kind of keep it around for Kaya, but I don't know. I think we're just gonna have to soul search here. We get, we don't have to pay the whopping life for this. And I think the souls, if we're gonna use the soul search now, again, it's probably the best that we do this, especially with mono red being so efficient. So that works out well. We get rid of the lightning strike. It is what it is. If we're gonna go for the soul search at all, that was the time to do it. So, okay, we actually don't feel comfortable attacking. I would feel very uncomfortable if they attack. But either way, let's go ahead and get the Kaya going. And I think I'm just going to probably set up for a token here. Hello, Kaya. Alright, let's go for the token. I could go for the Exile both 
type of thing here. But maybe I do that next turn. Let's just go ahead and just set up a little bit of defense. And hopefully they're kind of stuck on land here. So I go for Sockens then, which is okay. They only have two cards in their hand. So this is a very, very weird model. I'm not really sure. Why are they running the, the Goblin Tomb Raider? Are they running artifacts or something? Because why? I don't really see why else they would do that. If they do solve the case, they get a new hand like every single turn. So I don't really love that. I see them eyeing down my Kaya. The Kaya has four loyalty counters, so we're looking good there. And now, what's in my graveyard? Nothing's in my graveyard, so I can't really go for the Kaya shenanigans. But I can surveil and maybe just like throw the dice. Maybe we can just kind of roll the dice with Kaya and see if we uh, surveil into a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. Or we can just start exiling their own Cemetery Gatekeepers. But I think I kind of, let's do this. Okay, we well, at least get the Malicious Eclipse. Okay, Malicious Eclipse like does work out. It's not a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, which would be preferable. A big 7-5 life blinker would be very, very nice, cheating that out, essentially, but, um... We could go for the... Uh, man, I gotta take four for that uh, tense District Hero. Oh, man. I think we're gonna have to just... Let's do this. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna go for the tense District Hero, so let's go for this. Uh, the one in our hand, rather. Let's do that. It's not great. It's not great, but now we have a malicious eclipse, and now we can kind of we can wipe their whole board. So hopefully that's a land in their hand. If that's a land in their hand, they get double screwed, and um, I guess we might as well block. I do like well, yeah. Let's let's block maybe just get, in case they have the monstrous rage. I guess we'll double block with our token here. They're, they're, they're gonna, the token's going to go bye-bye anyway. So lightning strike, they get rid of the 10th. Okay, this is fine. This is actually pretty okay here. Obviously, we're, we're already, we already scribed there. The reason I double block is because the Malicious Eclipse is going to kill them anyway. And um, yeah, we might as well do this. So let's go for our Malicious Eclipse. Get the heck out of here. Still not really sure what the goblin, the, the, the little goblin dude is for. So let's go for our 10th district hero. And we don't get bonged on the 10th district hero this time. Feels absolutely amazing. Those cemetery gatekeepers... I actually think they're pretty good. They see like pretty no play, but I think they're pretty underrated. I do, I do think, um, not in straight up burn, you, you kind of have to be a little quirky about it, but I think they kind of got phased out once like the uh, the mono red that we know and hate. I would say love, but as we know and hate, kind of phased them out just because it's um, quicker that way. But down to nine, they got a shock. They're not shock, play with fire. Shock is back, but uh, yeah, play with fire. I feel on the land. Okay, so one mystery card and a play with fire. Nine life and a strangle. Don't love it, but it's okay. And now they just got a play with fire. Yeah, this is okay. Down to seven. I think this is okay. And then Kaya can kind of do their thing. Kaya can do her thing. Yeah, let's go for the surveil and exile card from a graveyard. Let's just set up our draws here. We get it. We get a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. I'm going to go ahead and ditch the, the Eclipse here. And as long as we get the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, I think we are safe. So now we got a seven, five. Oh, that is everything. A 7-5 with lifelink. Of course, we're cheating it out. And now that lifelink is going to just help the world. Restless Fortress gives us an extra two. And now I think we won. I think there's absolutely no way to come back from this. I know they have their, like, case solved and everything like that. But now we're back up to 16. And now, yeah, now I, I think it's... I don't want to say it's game over yet. We can't do that unlimited times because the Fresh and Flesh Gorger did get exiled. So actually, I mean, yeah, I don't want to get too, I don't want to get too crazy here. They have a lot of draw power and a lot of firepower, and I can't go for the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger every turn. Ren's Resolve. Okay, yeah, you know, maybe I got a little bit too happy. Let's see what we got here. The Fusion of Codebreakers, new card as well. So this is kind of like a, I don't want to say mid-range mono red. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's just, it's definitely not the, the stereotypical mono red, but I kind of like it. It, it, it at least seems like a coherent deck it seems like a, a semi other than the um other than the goblin i don't know i mean i, I guess they have the experimental synthesizer but that doesn't seem that strong i have no idea why they're going for kaya kaya still lives you have to do three than loyalty that. counters and they got to worry about this restless fortress but i mean yeah i mean they're not really in the best of positions anyway but is this lethal hold on once this is not lethal this is not lethal so i'm gonna go for the hopeless nightmare instead of the restless fortress just because it's not lethal if i swing in and we still have 16 life Soul Search or a Malicious Eclipse. I could go for the Malicious Eclipse. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess we'll go for the Malicious Eclipse here. We can just get, kind of reset the board here again. I am a little nervous. I mean, might need a little bit more firepower than this. But we do have the Restless Fortress as well. So let's Surveil 2. Okay, I was going to say. Let's, I was going to gamble. Just see if that we could kind of reanimate from the grave something here. And we can't reanimate from their grave. It has to be from ours. So it is what it is. 
But um, yeah, let's just go for the malicious eclipse. Um, let's just do that. Uh, did I? I don't. Hold on, I'm trying to think here. Did I miss lethal? I guess. Hold on. Malicious eclipse. I. Can I? Hold on. I think I missed lethal here. I could have reanimated the token into a 10th district hero and then bumped it up. And then I think I had a one and then four. Would that, hold on, would that have been, I think I missed lethal there. Yeah, I could have used the to the, the treasure token for the 10th district hero. Okay, yeah, oops, oops. Hopefully it doesn't matter. Another case of the Crimson Pulse. Um, I still have four life, so I'm not, I'm not out of the woods here by any means. Got Kaya in a Voldaren Epic here. If they don't, yeah, we, we should be okay. Kaya can at least do one more turn. Yeah, that was, that was actually pretty bad. They're actually gonna swing it in on my face and not Kai, which kind of makes sense. I mean, Kai is still good to go anyway. Let's go for the Backstreet Boys, see if we can surveil away a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. We do not, but that's okay. Well, let's not make the same mistake twice. Let's go straight in for Kaya, surveil to exile. Yeah, let's go ahead and exile here. That was a pretty big, pretty big oopsie. So let's, yeah, I think we're, I think we're good to go now though. Um, let's do this and go for the 10th District Hero. And we are good to go. Let's go and make this token. And it flies as well. And now we can just use this to bump it up. And I think we're good to go. So yeah, collect the evidence. We got all the evidence in the world. And yeah, we, we, we mitigate our mistake. And we take it in the end anyway. GG's. Good old Yardy B. How we doing here? All right, it looks pretty good. Got the Emperor. I think we're looking good here. You know what? I, I don't know what we're playing. I'm actually just going to commit to the Mire. It kind of sucks. But with the cave, if I don't know what I'm playing... Honestly, there's so much Convoke, there's so much Mono Red, so we don't, we're not facing that, obviously, but yeah, I'm not going to pain our saves in, ourselves in with the cave if I don't have to, so. Let's go and go for the hello, get a little Tamiyo friendly hello, and go for a Hopeless Nightmare. Yeah, like I said, turn one, if I if I can go for the Mire or the cave of, you know, whatever, any, any pain land, really, I will definitely take the uh, the Abandoned Mire instead. Except if we were on the draw here, and I was seeing that we play anything that wasn't red, honestly, I uh, would definitely would have just uh, shocked ourselves in, but it is what it is. Let's go for the Hopeless Nightmare and while they take their time. The RDB, they get rid of a Glissa. I don't want to see a Glissa, so that's nice. We have a lot of combat, so definitely don't love the Glissa. I would say we have a lot of combat. We're not, we're not an aggro deck. We're like a quirky... I don't even know what that you would really call us. We're kind of combo. We're kind of mid-range. We're kind of control. We're kind of a lot of things. So, a little bit awkward on turn two here, or turn three, rather. Go for the 10th District Hero. We do have the Devouring Sugar Maul, but I think ultimately just getting down the hero is pretty good. You know, it is kind of tempting to go for the Devouring Sugar Maul and just slam it down instead of going in for the two. Just so, um, virtual... Yeah, that sucks. That is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And now that we have the Soul Search, now I'm going to backtrack that last statement. Now I think we're going to go in for the Soul Search and then the Devouring Sugar Maw. So Devouring Sugar Maw, we can do it at instant speed, but now let's go for the Soul Search. And Obliterator or Liliana? Okay. I think we're going to get rid of Liliana. I think the Obliterator we can handle. <laughs> okay, the Obliterator cannot attack. And even if we do, we're at 20 life, so I don't really care. And then we have the Emperor. So, and they don't have a fight spell. If they had a fight spell, I obviously wouldn't do that. They give us a nice. I don't know if that's like, uh, okay, you know, whatever. We'll give, we'll give you, a, we'll give you spankings. I'm, I, you know, a lot of times I'll give a Sorn a cheers to you, but uh, right now I'll just give you spankings here because I don't know if they're being uh, cocky or something. But this Obliterator, we can handle the Obliterator. Unless they top deck the fight spell, I'll literally cry. But other than that, let's go ahead and de devouring Sugar Maul. Absolutely love this thing. Um. Devouring Sugar Maul, I have made a deck with it way back when Eldraine first dropped, but I am so glad to see the Sugar Maul back. I think this card is really awesome, especially with the Hopeless Nightmare. So much synergy. Dread Knight, not seeing a fight spell. If a fight spell did, I would be very, very sad, but not a down in 15. And we have the Wandering Emperor to take care of that. Let's go ahead and do the Hopeless Nightmare. Devour the Hopeless Nightmare. And there's another one. You know what? Actually, the whole, that's actually pretty gosh darn good. We have five. Um, no, let's, let's put this back. Yeah, we have five. Yeah, we have five. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. Um, at least we'll get rid of a land that actually is really relevant just because they do have the virtue of uh, persistence here. So let's go ahead and get rid of the obliterator as planned. So that was a long-winded plan. They give us a nice, and then now we'll give a cheers to you. Hopeless Slimer. Yeah, I know they have a, uh, you know, a force. It doesn't seem that great here, but no, it is great. The Devouring Sugar Maw. Absolutely love this. The Sugar Daddy. Let's go. Okay. So, they did get rid of a land. I guess, I mean, again, it is relevant. They are one short of the virtue now. So, you know, that could, that could help. And it did hit them for life. So, you know. Liliana, that's completely okay. They are, so that's, this is all the resources. This they can't do anything else home, other than combat this turn. And they're going to do this. We're just going to get rid of 1-1. One, one. Absolutely do not care. Even if they do swing into the Emperor. And I don't think they can. Because that's actually a good game. If they do that, I go for the Restless Fortress and the Sugar Maw. 
No, Yardy, Yardy B. No, you just gave up the game. That is that is definitely good game. Sugar Moth, let's go and do the Hopeless Nightmare just for fun to see what we have, but this is a good game. Aquazots and a 10th District Hero. Sounds amazing. We're not going to need them, but it is what it is. Yeah, let's go for the Restless Fortress, and that's going to hit two. Before we swing, let's clank it up, and the Sugar Moth. So glad to give some love to the Sugar Moth. Atroxity, how we doing here? Might as well, yeah, let's go ahead and keep this. This is looking good. I like the, uh, the Atroxity, not Atrocity, Atroxity. So... Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's see what we got here. Um, go for a little Devouring Sugar Maul. Absolutely a big fan of the Devouring Sugar Maul. One of those cards that absolutely nobody's playing, but I think it's a very playable card. So, Atrocity. I think the only atrox Atrocity that Atrocity is committing is this uh, almost roping. And I guess they're not technically roping right now, but there we go. All right, so I guess we're going to play. Cool. All right, Atrocity, let's see what you got for me. Come on. I know you're... Okay, there you go. The, the, I see the hand highlighting all of this just to play Mono Red. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I was going to say, is either Mono Red or Convoke? Both of them are pretty gosh darn good right now. But, um, you know what? We could flash in the Devouring Sugar Maul. But I'm actually going to go for the Greedy Freebooter. I'm definitely looking to Chump Block. Hopefully, they just don't have a Monstrous Rage. But let's go ahead and just Chump Block whatever they have. And then I'll Scry for a land. And we get a Treasure Token. So, that's definitely what the uh, the plan is right now. You know they always have a monstrous rage though, right? So spear guard. Um, sure. I guess we'll just. I guess we'll get rid of. I'm gonna go for the swift spear. I know it seems insane, but if they have, yeah, monstrous. Okay, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I, I would assume they use the monstrous rage on the spear guard anyway. But this way, I, my thought process: if I have the the malicious uh, eclipse, the spear guard is gonna get exiled anyway. So that's kind of what we're looking for here. So. Yeah, I mean, this is not looking good. There's really no way to spin it. Because they would get the rat token back anyway. So if I go for Liliana, it's just not going to work that way. So, you know what? I think I'm actually going to slam down the Sugar Maul. I don't... This sounds insane. But I know the Sugar Maul, I don't have a, uh, a token. But my thought process is they're going to juice the Swift Spear up so high that I think the Sugar Maul... We're going to block and then just, like, absorb it with the six toughness on this whopping behemoth of a creature. On turn three, I mean, this is, I think this is all we can really do. I can't really afford to go for the Steel Seraph, or Liliana doesn't do anything. Um, Aklazots would do something, but not in this world. So, yeah, I could go for Ride of, I could go for Ride of Oblivion, second, but either way, I'm getting rid of the Treasure Token. So, this way, I at least drop this huge thing. Yeah, I can't, um, we're not going to even use it for the next turn. We have to use it for this turn, and I know that they're going to burn it to death. So, at least you put a big wall on its way. All right, two, three. You got it. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I mean, if, it, if it's not this, then it'd be something else. So, it is what it is. Wish Talker Frenzy. Oh, and a Monster's Rage. That's like almost a Stone Cold Nuts. Down to seven. At least we get the kill, though. We get the kill, so it could be worse. Now, ugh, man, I'm kind of deg uh, regretting this a little bit here. Let's go for the Freebooter, and I go. I guess we'll go for the Rite of Oblivion. Get rid of you. We do have to take that one pain, which is absolutely brutal. We do get the Treasure Token, but now they don't. Uh, Sanctum, yeah, I think we're going to have to take that. So now we're going to get rid of you. Exile, so they don't get that 1-1 one, one rat at the back end. But now we get a Treasure Token, and now we can go for Aqua. Wow, this could be the opening we needed. I'm going to go right in for Aklazot. The lifelink is going to be everything. They might just be stuck on land, or they might just be slow rolling me, have a double lightning strike, and I'll, I will be very, very uh, upset. But wow, they don't do anything that entire turn. They have to just be blooded. I think I think we just kind of get lucky there, and they still have nothing. Wow. Okay, let's go in for the Steel Seraph. Um, yeah, let's go for the Steel Seraph, and I think what we're going to do here... Well, I have to pay for the Steel Seraph, so that's actually kind of yucky. Maybe not. Hold on. I'm... Let's swing in first. Because I, my plan was to go for the Steel Seraph, if, in case you couldn't hear my uh, my brain rebooting. I was going to say, if they had double, like... I don't know. If they had a double lightning strike, they would just do it anyway. I was going to go for the Steel Seraph and go for Vigilance on the Aquazots. But I was trying to Galaxy Brain this, and I was thinking, like, if I pay one, if they have a lightning strike and a shock... And I tap and I pain land myself in. That would not be good. But either way, I think we can go ahead and fill the Steel Seraph now. Pay one up to nine. I mean, hopefully that made sense because otherwise, if they would have just gotten like the shot or not play with fire or something like that, a play with fire and then a lightning strike for lethal at five. If I would have pain land before Act Thoughts went through, I probably would have uninstalled the game and cried for at least three hours straight, probably. 
But yeah, now, now we're sitting pretty. Now I think it's just kind of smooth sailing from here. We go in for our Aklazots. We got the Life Link. And now our Steel Seraph gives us Life Link as well. And now it's just all gravy. They only got one card in their hand. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure anyway. There's no way to deal eight damage with one card. Even with four open mana sources open here. I think we're good to go. So Steel Seraph is going to be an absolute no-brainer. Let's go in for the Life Link. And now we got seven damage of Life Link in here with the Aklazots with, with this card. And we know Atrocity. I mean, they did kind of semi-rope at the beginning of the game. So you got to know that they're probably prone to roping because this is the end of the game. So, oh, okay. Well, maybe not. Let's go for the lifelink and maybe we, let's go. Aklazots will do that. I would think they go for the lightning strike. So that's fine. It is what it is. And we're going to be able to draw a card from Aklazots. We get a Kaya just for fun. Just for fun, we go for Kaya. And I think we're better off for Kaya than Liliana right now. Let's go for Kaya. And I don't think there's really too much to think about here. We do have a token here. Let's go in for the uh, a 1 1 to block whatever they might have. Still up to 12, and I think the game's pretty much over here. So, and there it is. Good game, Atrocity.